guys, Left Burst here, and today I'm gonna do an episode review of Beyblade Burst, episode 38, or 39, did I say 38? I meant 39 of the Beyblade Burst Super Z uh, anime. If you haven't seen this episode, obviously this video is gonna be a spoiler because it's gonna be like a review slash reenactment, so go uh, check it out. You can probably just look it up on Google and find the episode like really quick. Anyway, so overall, I think I like this episode. This episode was all about Kit. If you guys don't remember Kit, he was that little guy from season one. You see that little guy in my thumbnail right there? He turned into like, I really like his new design. I really like his jacket. I think his jacket looks really cool and I like his new hat and his, he's just all grown up and it's great. Anyway, so yeah, this episode was all about introducing or reintroducing, I guess, the new character. Kit Lopez, and then we got like a battle between Aiga and Hearts, which was pretty hype. It was a pretty great battle. Anyway, let's just get into this episode. But actually, before I talk about this episode, let me just talk about what happened last episode. Last episode, pretty great episode. I, I liked it. Like, last episode was pretty great. Um, Basically, what happened last episode, a quick uh, rundown, was that Aiga was making his new Beyblade, Chozy Achilles, with the help of the one and only Shu Kurenai. And you know any episode with Shu Kurenai is an amazing episode. Oh my gosh, look at Shu right there. Shu is, he's so great. He's definitely my favorite first character. He's amazing. I... I le love Shu. He's he's so amazing. Anyway, uh, so what happened was Shu helped Aiga make his new Beyblade, chose the Achilles, and then once um, Aiga made chose the Achilles, he had like a battle with Shu. Shu basically like beat him up, beat uh, Aiga a billion times, but Aiga in the end was able to get one lucky victory off of Shu and beat Shu with his new Beyblade, chose the Achilles. And as you see, look at those two gorgeous Beyblades on screen right now. You have. Chosy uh, Spriggan and Chosy Achilles. Now, obviously, Chosy Spriggan's a superior one, but Chosy Achilles, its color scheme and design looks so great. Definitely an upgrade from Z Achilles, in my opinion. I think it looks really great. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically what happened last episode. Uh, Aiga made his new Beyblade, Aiga beat Chu. And yeah, moving on to this episode, it looks like, or this episode starts off at an airport. And at the airport, we see this mysterious figure come off the plane. And as you guys probably already know, we already know who this is. Uh, character is. This is Kit Lopez. As I was saying before, the guy from season one, he was kind of like, um, he was kind of like a uh, vault sidekick in the God series. That little boy, he didn't really have a Beyblade, but he was always like on his iPad, like looking at the other person's Beyblade to see their gimmicks and stuff. And he was the guy who like usually like explained uh, the God abilities, which was really cool. And I'm, oh my gosh, I know I said this earlier in the uh, review or whatever, but I'm so excited to see him actually use a Beyblade and actually like, um, battle or whatever it's so great seeing like characters that were in older series that were kind of like side characters come back in the newer series and then they're just like super awesome super great i hope he's like i hope kit lopez is going to be like toko done right you know how toko was like reintroduced in the chosy series and everyone was like oh my gosh toko he's amazing i love this character he was in like uh season one and now he's back in chosy i hope he's really good but then he ended up just having screw trident and screw trident was horrible it wasn't even a chosy layer but now we have Kit, and Kit actually does have a Chosy layer. I'll explain it later in this video. But yeah, I hope Kit is just like super great, super savage. I hope like, I mean, I don't hope he beats Vault, but how cool would it be if Kit just shows up, he challenges Vault to a battle, and then he destroys Chosy Valkyrie, which was like hyped up to be like one of the best Chosy bays. I think that would just be really awesome, really cool. Anyway, so yeah, Kit, uh comes off of the plane and then we cut to a scene with Aiga feeding the animals so it looks like Aiga returned back to Begoma Academy because obviously he's with the sheep at Begoma Academy also were the sheep and all the animals there what what school keeps sheep at their like uh school or whatever like I I wish my school had sheep that'd be pretty cool like a petting zoo for my school that that'd be amazing but my school my school doesn't even have a pool so it's like really sad anyway so they're at BC Soul or not BC Soul they're at Begoma Academy and at Begoma Academy they're watching this uh live stream or channel thing where it says that Aiga and Hearts are going to be having a rematch later today so that of course hypes Aiga up he like really wants to battle Hearts really wants to beat Hearts uh once and for all like Aiga he first Hearts Hearts twice 
and he lost both times and it's like super sad anyway so uh preparing for that battle of course Aiga is battling with Fubuki and Ranjaro and sadly Fubuki and Ranjaro as much as I love both of those characters actually I don't really like Ranjaro I kind of only like Fubuki um they're both kind of irrelevant at this point like they're not really that good anymore I remember Fubuki uh training with Shu and he was starting to get a, like a lot better like he was starting to beat everyone and then I feel like he just kind of like lost his touch or whatever and he stopped being good again now he's just like really bad he's kind of just a side character now which is really sad i hope abuki gets possessed by the evil spirits and then gets a chosy bay how cool would that be that'd be amazing or like aiga not aiga but like another character maybe like the new dead phoenix or who's gonna own dead phoenix i have no idea is fire heart's gonna own dead phoenix or is it gonna like are the two characters gonna fuse somehow <laughs> That would be really weird. Anyway, so yeah, whoever's gonna own Dead Phoenix, I hope they, like, crush Fubuki's Beyblade Emperor Fornius, and then Fubuki gets, like, a chosy version of that. I think that'd be really cool. Anyway, so, um... While Aiga, Renjaro, and Fubuki are battling, Kit shows up out of nowhere, and right now we still don't know who this character is. They sh shaded out his eyes, so like, you're, it's supposed to be mysterious, like, oh my gosh, who's this mysterious blader or whatever? But of course, we already know it's Kit, because like, he has the signature hair and skin color and stuff. So yeah. Um, anyway, so, uh, Z Achilles goes flying out of the stadium, and Kit is able to catch Z Achilles like a total boss. He catches it. <laughs> He catches it like so slick like it just comes towards his face at the last second He catches it with his hand and it's such a cool scene. Anyway, so um kit catches uh, Chosey Achilles, and he plays around with a dimension driver. He's like, oh my gosh, this is like a super cool driver. He's just like spinning it around. He's like, what a unique driver. This driver is really cool. And I have to agree with Kit. The dimension driver is super cool. Just look at this design. All you gotta do is twist it. You can change it to like a billion different modes. I think it has like, not obviously not infinite modes, but it has a lot of modes. I think it's the driver with the most modes to be released, or soon to be released, because this Beyblade's releasing on the 27th, which is really sad. I wish the Beyblade re would release, like, a bit earlier. Like, come on, why why didn't Takara tell me just release the Beyblade before Christmas? That would have been so great. Why'd they have to release it on the 27th? It really sucks. Anyway, uh, yeah, so of course, Aiga does not like Kit playing around with his Beyblade, so he snatches Z Achilles out of his hand, and he's like, yo, Kit, I'm, well, he doesn't know it's Kit, but he's like, yo, I'm the only one who's allowed to play with my Beyblade's driver, get your hands off of that. But then Kit's like, yo, do you do even know who I am? I am Voltoid's best friend or like i'm volta oi's friend and everyone's like oh my gosh you're friends with volta oi you know volta oi it's not like we've seen volta oi like a billion times in the series before i still don't under i mean i guess i understand why like anyone relate to volta oi is a big deal because volta oi is still the number one blader ex I, at least i think he like regained that title after he beat hearts anyway so yeah um, everyone's surprised that Kit's friends with Volta Oi, and yeah, Kit's like, yo, I'm friends with Volta Oi, I know everything about him, I've known him for like, he's known him for like three years since the God series. So, uh, yeah, Kit's like, he grabs Aiga's arm, he's like, let me show you how much I know about Volta Oi, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about Volta Oi. And like, the next few scenes, it's kinda just, um... It's kind of just looking back on like what Volta Oi did in the first season of Beyblade Burst. It's kind of creepy. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of creepy how Kit knows everything about Volta Oi. Like he's like, this is where Volta Oi trained. This is what Volta Oi did. It's like kind of stalker. Like I don't, I don't really like it. I wouldn't like someone knowing that much about me. So it's like really weird to see Kit like totally fanboy over Volt. Anyway, so yeah, Kit brings Aiga to this lake. And if you guys seen Beyblade Burst season one. You know what this place is. This is the place where, like, Vault would train. This is the place where, like, Wakia and Chu would pass by while they're running. This is the place that the Quad Quetzalcoatl owner would do a bunch of skate tricks. It's just a really iconic place for Beyblade Burst Season 1. And it's really, it's so nostalgic to see again in the anime. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Kit brings uh, Aiga here. And Aiga's like, what's the big deal? It's, it's just a lake. It's just some grass. It's just a tree. But then Kit's like, no, look at these pictures. I took a vault while he was training totally not stalker like so he shows uh Aiga um that vault trained here this was uh vault's main training spot and then I goes like oh my gosh that's so cool vault trained here I kind of want to train here too but then Kit's like no we gotta move on let me show you some more stuff I know vault vault to oi that's really creepy so uh Kit brings Aiga to the uh stadium where uh Shu and 
Vault used to battle at, and oh my goodness, I know, I know I'm saying it's kind of creepy, but like just seeing these scenes again, it's just so nostalgic, because I remember waking up every Monday morning, before I even started my YouTube channel, waking up every Monday morning, watching the new episode of Beyblade Burst, and I was so hyped for it, every single Monday, it was, it's so, it was so great, I love this anime so much, I think I loved it a lot, because it wasn't like super over dramatic, like it was like just, normal people playing with their toys and having a good time and obviously that that feeling kind of worn off over the god series and the chozetsu series now that the new chozetsu beyblades like make tornadoes and break beyblades i kind of miss the days with the dual layers where they were just toys and they were just like people having fun back when the beyblades didn't possess each other and have weird powers you know anyway um after that kit brings aiga to the spot where uh the begoma academy bay club used to hang out and battle and train and he shows aiga a picture of the old Vegoma Academy Bay Club and look at them oh my gosh this is so nostalgic look at Wakia what happened to like half of these characters the only characters we've seen in Chozy is obviously Vault and Shu like I'm really concerned what happened to Wakia look how much personality Wakia has Wakia really needs to return to the Chozy anime I just seeing this picture I'm just like dang I really want Wakia to return give me a Chozy you know you don't even have to make a Chozy wife he can still use Tornado Wyvern. I don't care. Just bring Wakia back. He was such a great character. I loved Wakia so much. Like, obviously, he was kind of like a mean character, but he had so much personality. He was great. And also, what happened to Ken? Look at Ken's smile. Oh my gosh, it's so great. I'm so sad that Ken got replaced with Kyle. They brought back Kerbius, but they were like, you know what? Let's just not bring back the best character ever. Well, not the best character ever, because obviously, Shu Kuren is a thing, but one of the best characters, Ken. And like, uh, what happened to Dinah? Dinah just disappeared too. Like, he was part of the French team and now he's just not there anymore. How can they show all these, like, plot relevant characters from the past two seasons, but then they just never return in Beyblade vs. Chosy? Like, I'm- I'm sorry. You at least have to make- you at least- uh, the people who are making Beyblade vs. Super Z, can you please at least make a cameo of these characters? They don't even have to show up. Like, I mean, they- I mean, obviously if they're making cameo, they have to show up, but they don't even have to have their own Beyblades. They don't have to battle. I just want to see, like, a few, like, scenes with them. Like, that would be so cool. I- I'd be so hyped for that. And also, talking about the last character there, Rantaro. What happened to Rantaro? I always thought Rant- I remember when the Super Z came out, uh, I thought Ranjaro was Rantaro, because they're basically the same person, except Ranjaro has, like, the crazy hair. Anyway, so yeah, Ranjaro and Rantaro, they're brothers. So wouldn't you think Rantaro would sometimes come to, like, his brother's Beyblade tournaments? Or, like, wasn't Ranjaro, like, on TV? Wouldn't- Don't you think that we should have at least got a scene seeing, like, Rantaro being like, oh yeah, that's my brother right there. That'd be- That'd be really cool. I really wish all these characters made uh, an appearance in the new Chozy anime, but sadly, they just haven't. Anyway, so after uh, looking at the Begoma Academy Bay Club hangout spots, um, Kit and Aiga, they go to uh, Vault's mother's bakery and they eat, of course, the Bay Bread, and it looks like the Bay Bread is now in the shape of Chozy Valkyrie. And look at the Chozy Valkyrie Bay Bread. I need to make Bay Bread myself. I'm sure it's not going to taste very good if I make it myself, but it'll at least look cool. If you guys want to see a video on that, probably not going to make a video on that because I'm really bad at cooking. Anyway, um... Uh, after they eat the babe bread, um, they ask, uh, Vault's mom, like, what training Vault did, and Vault's mom's like, alright, here's the training that they did, and Vault's mom basically makes Aiga and Kit, like, make dough for the bread, basically, Vault's training from his mom was just doing chores around the house, so Vault's mom's just making Vault's friends do chores around the house, which is really funny. Alright, so after, um, doing chores around the house at Vault's, at Vault's mom's bakery, they go to Aiga's tent to sleep, and in Aiga's tent, uh, they reviewed the battle between Hearts and uh, Vault, and Kit gives some advice to Aiga, saying, like, you should do this against Hearts, uh, after seeing, like, because, of course, Kit's a very, like, techie guy, like, he's very intelligent, so he tells Aiga some strategy that he could use against, uh, Hearts. Alright, so, that's about the first half of the episode. The second half of the episode is, of course, the battle between Hearts and Aiga. The much-awaited battle. I mean, this is, like, their third time battling Hearts. Should have lost to Aiga like the second time. I don't even know why Aiga couldn't beat Hearts the second time. It was so weird. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. Um, 
we get a look at the place where the battle is gonna be held. And look at this place right here. I'm just gonna say, the design of this, like, uh, I don't know what to call this, this building, it is just so weird. Imagine seeing this building in real life. It'd be crazy. How much money do you think this building would make, or, uh, would take to make? Like, look at, look at the, uh, city to like the right the, look at that skyscraper that skyscraper is huge now compare that skyscraper to this giant beyblade building like this thing probably costs like millions of dollars to create it's crazy anyway it's a crazy design really like it uh only it's like a, th a design that like can only happen like cartoons or anime like there's no way you can actually make this sign in real life i really hope they do though if they actually make a real life beyblade like <laughs> gym or like building or like that or stadium that'd be great anyway so we get a look at the interior of the place and look oh my gosh it's so bright it's so colorful i really like uh the auditorium i would say with the stadium it looks really great anyway so um hearts of course is there and i guess there and i guess shows uh hearts his new babe but he's like look i got a new Beyblade after five five broke my achilles it's a new evolution of achilles chosy achilles and it has the same ability as chosy valkyrie that beat you before but hearts is like i don't care about your stupid Beyblade. i'm gonna beat you anyway so yeah they start the battle of course they both launch their Beyblades in the stadium and look at hearts hearts looks so weird i really I really hate how Hearts always sticks out his tongue. It's just so unsanitary and very gross. And it's also really weird how whenever Hearts launches his Beyblade, there's like this weird like purple black aura that comes out. Anyway, so um, then Iga does his crazy uh, running shoot, kind of like the running shoot that Vault did in the first series. And it's really great. I really like the running shoot. It's a really cool... Uh, uh... <laughs> My audio cut out. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, I was talking about uh, Iga's new launching technique, his like running shoot. It's a really cool launch. I really like it. Something that Vault did back in season one. So yeah, they both launched their Beyblades in the stadium and um... Achilles, it looks like Achilles isn't able to get its wings out and use its Chosy ability. And usually when uh, the Chosy Bay isn't able to use its Chosy ability, you think that the Beyblade's gonna lose. But actually, this battle is a little different because of what Kit told Aiga. So Kit gave Aiga the advice of going into attack mode. I think the advice was put uh, Achilles into attack mode so it's faster than Hearts because Hearts is a balance type and compared to your attack type mode on your uh, balance type Beyblade, it'll be faster than Hearts. So yeah, uh, because uh, Chosy Achilles is faster than uh, Dead Hades, it is able to avoid Dead Hades' attack, and Dead Hades uh, misses the attack, hits the wall, and for the rest of the battle, it's really unbalanced, going like crazy in the stadium. Anyway, so uh, after that, of course, they make a huge collision in the stadium. I think Dead Hades uses Dead Impact, and uh, Z or Chosy Achilles uses, of course, Chosy Achilles' special move, Zeta Buster or Z Buster, and uh, Z Buster is able to to knock dead Hades out of the stadium, giving one point to Aiga. So Aiga is actually winning at this time, which is crazy to see Aiga winning against Hearts. And I know, like, for the past few episode reviews, I've been saying how much I dislike Aiga, but, like, Aiga with the new uh, Chosy Achilles, I don't know what it is, what it is about him. Maybe it's just that, like, the, I really like the new Chosy Achilles or something, but I'm starting to actually like Aiga's character. Like, he's starting to knock it as annoying. Maybe it's because, um... He's not possessed by the evil aura anymore. Like, I really, I like the evil aura concept, but I feel like it was done really poorly in the anime. So now that he's not possessed by it anymore, I feel like I, he's, like, a much better character. Anyway, so, uh, after that, they have another battle. Uh, of course, their second battle. And their second battle ends really fast. The second battle, we don't even see, like, a cutscene. We just see, uh, Z Achilles just launch out of the stadium. So then, uh, Hearts gets one point. So the score is one to one. And before they start their third and final battle, Aiga gets, like, this kind kind of, um feeling or this kind of message from his Beyblade, uh, Chosy Achilles, and Chosy Achilles, I guess, gives Aiga, like, a prep talk. You know how, like, Aiga sometimes talks to his Beyblade and gets this kind of, like, uh, I, what, what do you call it? Gets motivation, I guess? I don't know, inspiration or whatever? Anyway, so he talks to his Beyblade, he relaxes, he gets serious about the battle, they start the battle, and I guess because Aiga did talk to his Beyblade, he was able to unlock the special Chosy ability, the one where, uh, the wings on Chosy Achilles 
Beyblades uh, pop out and the Beyblade becomes unburstable. Anyway, they start the battle and the first thing that happens is Hearts uses his special move, uh, Dead Gravity, and of course Dead Gravity is a move where you like circle the other Beyblade and you go so fast that the other Beyblade can't get out of your circle, so you just keep on rapidly attacking. And uh, you would think, Hearts thought that he was gonna beat Iga this way, that he was just gonna destroy Iga this way, but Iga actually thought up of a counter strategy. Iga's counter strategy was that he powered up Z Achilles and uses Z Achilles special move, uh, Zeta Defense or Z Defense, and you guys know Z Defense, but with the new uh, Chosy Achilles, I guess it's even more powerful. So yeah, Iga uses uh, Z Defense and he's able to kind of like damage the, um, or not damage, but like I guess outpower the dead gravity and he's able to, uh, get out of the dead gravity kind of circle thing. He's able to just like ram through it. So he gets out of the dead gravity circle thing and he attacks uh, dead Hades and he's able to burst dead Hades. An amazing scene. Oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. Guys, if you haven't checked out the episode yet, go check it out. It's, it's a really good scene. I really liked it. Anyway, so yeah, of course, uh, Z or Chosy Achilles is able to burst uh, dead Hades and look at Chosy Achilles right here. Look how cool that Beyblade looks. I love the color scheme. The color scheme looks so nice. The red, yellow, and blue. I think it looks so great. So much better than um the Z Achilles color scheme where it didn't have the blue. I feel like the blue just adds so much to the Beyblade. Anyway, so that yeah, that's basically the episode ends off. Actually, we get one more scene where we see Kit looking at his Beyblade, and it's confirmed that Kit's Beyblade is indeed Air Knight, and it's kind of cool how Kit's Beyblade's Air Knight, because I remember when it first came out, they, it kind of looked like Valkyrie, like Valkyrie Knights, they're kind of similar, and with the blue color scheme, Air Knight kind of like resembled Valkyrie, at least the middle part. Of course, this, uh, the shape resembles Maximum Gruda, but the middle part, or at least the avatar or whatever, it definitely resembles something like Valkyrie, so it's cool how like, uh, um, Kit, like, looks up to Vault, and he has a Beyblade very similar to Vault. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically the whole episode right there. Overall, I, I really like the episode. I like how most of the episode was looking back on Season 1 and having, like, kind of a nostalgia trip of, like, all the things that Vault's done and accomplished in his training and stuff. And I also really like the battle. I mean, I didn't, like, super like the battle between, uh, Iga and Hearts. It was a good battle. It wasn't the best battle in the world. There's definitely better, better battles. Like, of course, the battle in the God series versus Volt and Shu. Oh my god, that battle was so hype. That battle was great. Anyway, so yeah, that's my review of the whole entire episode. Let's get to the reenactment part. I don't remember the most of the battles that happened this episode. I think there was only really one main battle, of course, the one being between uh, Chosy Achilles and Hearts. Obviously, I don't have Chosy Achilles, so I'm going to be having to use Z Achilles versus Dead Hades. And also, there was a battle between uh, Chosy Achilles versus Fubuki and and Rantaro when they were training. I might do that battle, I might not, because that battle, I'm, I'll do that anyway. Anyway, so yeah, let's get to the stadium. Let's do the reenactment part now. All right, so we're at the stadium right now. Let's do the battles in chronological order. So I guess the first battle was Iga versus Emperor Fornius and Crash Ragnarok. This battle wasn't really important in the anime, so I'm probably not going to do too many battles between them. Probably just like one or two battles, all right? Ready, three, two, one, go. Crash Ragnarok, three, two, one, go. Emperor Fornius, three, two, one, go. Oh, wait, no shoot. Wait, give me a second. Three, two, one, go. Shoot. There is the Achilles. Let's see if it's going to be anime accurate. In the anime, I think the Achilles won most of the battles. But, oh, uh, and it seems like it is a little anime accurate, but I kind of cheated the system because I did launch the Achilles at the end in stamina mode. So we are going to do one more battle between them. Three, two, one, two. There's Crash. Three, two, one, two. There's Emperor. Three, two, one, two. And there is uh, Ica. This is really weird. These were like, I would say, mm, probably... Probably one of the most I wow I go one again all right that's pretty surprising but these Beyblades are probably one of the most iconic Beyblades in Chosy I would say at least like they're like the main character Beyblades like of course you have Fornius with Fubuki Fubuki is the main character Ranjaro is the main character and Iga is of course the pinnacle of the main character like the actual main character like these guys they, I don't even know what I'm talking about let's move on to the final battle in this episode the battle that took up like half the episode we have Hearts versus Iga this battle in the anime pretty intense sadly. 
I do not have uh, the Chozy Achilles. I really wish I did. I really wish Takira Tomi would just give me the Beyblades early. They're like, oh, you're a YouTuber. Here, have the Beyblades early. How cool would that be if Takira Tomi just sponsored YouTubers? That'd be so great. That'd be, that'd be amazing. Come on, Takira Tomi. Sponsor me, please. Give me all your Beyblades early so I can I can make YouTube videos about them. I, I have no idea what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to put Achilles on attack mode and then maybe switch to stamina type mode because I think that's what they did in the anime. But we're going to start in attack mode, all right? Ready, through two, and go. There is Hearts, aka Deathadius, and there is Achilles. Oh my goodness! Hearts just destroyed Achilles there. That's not very anime accurate. In the anime, Achilles was destroying hearts, but like, whatever. Ready, three, two, one, shoot. I switched it to salmon type mode, three, two, one, shoot. And there is dead Hades. Dead Hades, oh, dead Hades is just destroying uh, Z Achilles. I, actually, now that I think of it, that is a little anime accurate because Z Achilles was nev never able to beat dead Hades, but only, um... Chozy Achilles was able to beat Dead Hades. So, uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna end the battles. So, yeah, that was uh, my video on episode 39 of the Beyblade Burst Chozy anime reenactment slash review or whatever. I'm sorry, this video is extremely long. So, yeah, remember to come subscribe. If you guys wanna see more reviews, hopefully not as long, leave a like and leave a comment stuff. So, see you guys later. Have a nice day. Left Burst out.